Money. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews The hottest beat coming through, dropping knowledge on honor You get a beat at the front of you, with the truth that they offer you Yeah, hands up, we doing it for the culture To give artists and businesses more exposure Keep it real and stay silent just like a boulder It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower But if I stay running, I promise they getting closer Moreover, success, my older And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like vultures I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll Well, we'll be on the whole different vibe though We like to ride slow and keep our windows tinted So you really can see us like Stevie Wonder Waking up with his eyes closed, yeah Got the kind of flow that rock the boat On my 16s of pounds of dough And if you figure you can hang with me on the mic Then grab some rope Matter of fact, better grab some hope While you at it, we keep it live It's time to tune in Turn up the sound on what you're using It goes so hard, I think it's bruising This show is 2020, no need to zoom in, yeah I'm currently in quicksand with this awkward phase, and I'll explain. For the longest, I'm a worrier. I, I check on people because I'm an empath, kind of. Um, through most of the trauma that I've experienced, I've kind of detached from humanity, that love of humanity a little bit, and I'm trying to get it back. You know, I'm doing certain things, not as a gesture of what a human should do, but because I genuinely care. For instance, I have a friend whose mother was ill and went in the hospital. And mentally, I was like, I want to check on them to see if they're good. But I would think of all the factors around it. Is it a good time? How should I word this text? Uh, what if they're at work? Uh, what if somebody else has their phone? These are literally the factors that go in my mind before I send a text message. Yeah. And when I send it, I'm like, man. I will find a 99 things wrong with what I sent, but it's meant, you know, with the, the best intentions. Yeah. And then when I get the response, like you said, it's either going to be awkward or it's going to be okay, cool. And usually it's okay, cool. And this person was like, yo, thank you for checking on me. I really appreciate that. And I was like, whew, okay. I, 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 I can, I can do this a little bit more, Yeah. but I think my problem is for every one person that's like, cool, thank you. I'll have that awkward experience and it'll make me take two steps back. It's like, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, just keep going forward. Uh, of course, you already know. I ain't got to say it. You overthinking. <laughs> I am. <laughs> you right. overthinking it is not that, that serious, man. You just put yourself out there and it's up to them from there. You got to be true to you. You know what I mean? There's no disappointment graver than a disappointment in yourself. When you disappoint yourself, that sticks with you. When you disappoint someone else, they'll forget about it. Come on. <laughs> we we live in an era where what used to be true, what would trend for a decade, like the 60s, the 70s, and 80s, that trend, that trend would last for 10 years. It only last for like a month or so here. It's true. <laughs> My grandmama was wearing bell bottoms and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's true. you know, and then that that went for like a whole decade. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, they got something new. You know what I mean? And now it's like, last year was a totally different year. I don't it's even true. remember anything. There's no hallmarks. It's, what what happened that was so memorable for last year, for real? Can you just tell me off the top of your head? I can't. Exactly. We are overwhelmed with information. Overwhelmed. We're just, just over flooded with it. So making yourself avail availability is key, bro. That's gold. Just put yourself out there, man. Give people a chance to love you. And then uh, at, at, at top of that, on top of that, you know, they, they don't know you if you are always trying to crap up and whiff up the best version of yourself. They don't know you. That's true. They know what you crafted. Mm. That's all they know. Forgery. They know the product, <laughs> right? Mm. They know the product. What have you, man? It's okay, man. It's all right to be be wrong and to feel awkward and all that is fine, man. But you are gonna get through it. <laughs> you gonna get through it. You That's know? interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Nobody ever conveyed it that way before. Cause you're right. We're we're. It's it's so much information in a week, like. Because I'm thinking not like, for instance, this impeachment thing. 
This is, nobody be thinking about this like what two months from now. No. Not even gonna be worried no. about it unless they they actually legitimately plan on removing right. him from office. Right. Then it's gonna be like that. That'll be a historic moment then, yeah. and everybody gonna be talking like that forever. Because right. <laughs> yeah. he could be the first president ever to be removed yeah. from office. That's true. That would be something. Yeah, and yeah, that'd be that's... unbelievable because it means Republicans would have to flip, which I don't see happening. I do not see. There being enough Republicans to flip to remove him. I don't Somebody see. made a good analogy. That was like, because of course everybody was saying impeachment, and everybody just for some reason thought that meant he was out of here. No, no. he still no. went to work on Monday. Um, <laughs> what somebody made the analogy is that impeachment is when a girlfriend has presented the evidence oh, yeah, I saw that to break up with someone, mm -hmm. but presented it to his frat brothers. Yeah. That's impeachment. And I was like, wow, that is exactly what's going on. Because yeah. them niggas is not finna flip on Trump. They that is not, not finna happen. Yeah, because them supporters talk about civil war and I don't Bro. doubt them. Bro. Oh, doubt yeah. Them. It is definitely But it's, it's I don't want them to die like that. See, the crazy yeah. thing is, Trump supporters are loud. You know Very. what I mean? A lot of them are loud. Uh, a lot of people like us who are just like, I don't care for it. We quiet. I don't really have to say anything. You making a fool for yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Roll back the camera um, a decade from now. Everybody gonna be talking about how foolish you look. Right. So <laughs> by then, ain't nobody gonna have no emotional attachment to it. Ain't nobody ain't gonna be invested because it's gonna be a whole nother era, and they're gonna look at it objectively and be like, "You look kind of stupid." Mm -hmm. So you don't need for me to argue with you. What am I arguing for? True. You doing everything? Come on, you know what you're doing. Because mm -hmm. if I was doing it, you'd be like, "You stupid." Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. Like if Obama pulled anything that. Trump has been pulling, boy, that would have been got him out, not, not just impeached, but got him out of the office. Right. That was, he was a top scrutiny, man. I'm talking about they had a magnifying glass, a telescope, and a microscope looking at this brother. Bro, <laughs> I remember he wore, I think it was to his inauguration, he wore a brown suit. And they lost their oh, yeah. mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. They went, it wasn't even brown, I think it was tan. They lost it. Yeah. I mean, Fox was going in on him. He's such a disgrace to the culture. I'm what? Yeah. A suit, bro? A bro, but a suit. Eh. Yeah. It's mm. different. But but yeah, you're right. I mean, well, like it's it doesn't it doesn't last. So we 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 are way too hard on ourselves. Yeah, you're right. That embarrassment is a fleeting moment. It is very fleeting, man. And it's it is amazing how quickly people recover from it, bro. Like that is true. It's amazing. And, that and, is know, true. And I know that from experience. <laughs> I know this from. I literally like sometimes I just do it for fun. Now. Like I said, I, I got I got swag with my awkwardness. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's fun for me because uh, people who try to make a bigger moment out of it or try to define you according to whatever that experience is with you or what have you, even they have a hard time trying to just pin that to you. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And they only doing it because of something personal. It ain't got nothing to do with you. If they do, it's because they got something deeper within themselves. Like, I could never do anything like that. I could never. So it's like an envy. Yeah, of... yeah. It's like, I would never have the freedom. I don't think I could ever wow. get away with doing that. And because of that, the audacity of you to do it is the reason I'm why they were trying to free. Yes. Ooh. So they would try to pin it on that moment on you and define you by that moment. But everyone else who, you know, they don't care. <laughs> don't care, you know. Hmm. Damn. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. Most hating is the the hate of you daring. Yep, just being audacious. The audacity of you to do yeah. such and such. The audacity That's of you. That's crazy. Because I could never see myself doing that, and you seem like me. I'm so afraid, <laughs> and you're so brave, so I yeah. hate you for it. Yep. Damn. It'd be different if you was outside of the culture. You right. know what I mean? Like, if you was white. If you was over there doing yeah, that. Yeah, if you was over there, and you wouldn't participate in the culture that happens, then I could say that the odds were in their favor. You know, you had trust mm -hmm. from or something like that. But if we come from the same... privilege to do yeah, it. How you dare you yeah. be better than me with the same yes. circumstance? Wow! Yep. And it happens a whole lot, especially here in Mobile. Like, that, that's a part of the crab bucket mentality here in Mobile is that... We come, Cause I'm from Gulf Village, yeah, from Pritchett, yeah, from Gulf <laughs> Village. I don't talk like it. I don't. I don't act like it because I chose. I chose. I forged my own identity. I didn't let my environment choose. 
Same. for me. Tell me, Bill. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, brother? You see what I'm saying, brother? Mm -hmm. I I have we, we come from a genome that long spans the the lifespan of Tomaville and Pritchett. You know? Did you know those areas were middle class at mm -hmm. one point? Like yeah. not even fifty years back, these were the middle class yeah. areas. Yes. I had no idea, bro. Yes. It was a lot of power where we were. Yeah. You know, and that's where I believe <clears throat> and, and sorry to get so sidetracked, but I, I have to hit on this because this is a project I want to do in the future. Yeah. Um, two things. There's two types of pride here in Mobile that is like way more prevalent than I've seen anywhere else I've been. There's that school pride and then there's that church pride. Uh, and what I mean by both is that school spirit is real. Like, look at LaFleur, their reunion that they throw every year. Mm -hmm. Look at Battle of the Bands every year that we have mm -hmm. here. Blank Always. Too. Oh, my God. Blank. Well, them lepers, boy. Look. Whew. Because, and then, like, it was it was instilled in us, that pride. And I didn't get it until I got to this age. And I'm like, this is all black history. These are, when I found out and did, because uh, my fifth grade teacher, Miss Johnson, shout out to you. She selected all the black schools, the the black named or uh, the schools named after black students like Blunt, uh, Maddie T. Blunt, uh, Williamson, LaFleur, um, all the schools we had to do papers on. It was like 35 of us in the class. So each one of us had a different school. And it was for the black history program. And I got LaFleur. Everybody was mad at me because I got LaFleur. And I'm like, y'all, it's just another school. But even then, hearing those histories. Mm -hmm. Of, of these great black people here being honored by a school and they're attended to by these black students, by these black teachers, by these black principals was amazing, bro. Like these people that we have high schools after were superheroes, bro. Yeah. These were our Captain Americas, our, our Tony Starks and everything. And I often think like, what if somebody was to do like a, a comic on these people, you know? But we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's, that's cool. man, look, I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, I, I graduated from Sassoon. Oh, okay. Sassoon. I graduated from Theodore. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so it's just like I wasn't a part of that culture. So the culture I was part of was the hoods. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, Happy Hill versus you know oh, everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Orange Yellow Grove. Flags, thank you, Orange Grove, Roger Williams, RV. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to shout out nobody hood and right, right. like that. You know what I mean? But um growing up, that that I saw that pride more than I did mm -hmm. the school pride. But I guess it's just because of the kind of schools. Because I went to primarily black schools all my life until I lived with my grandmama and I went to Sassoon. Uh I went to Pillins, I went to Mercs. <laughs> you know, when when Mercs went when it was, you know, black mm -hmm. <laughs> it was when it was, because it's not like that. It's like a preparatory school no, almost yeah. now. I don't know what it is, but it is not what it was when I went there, bro. Right. It was before they built it. It was, we were still going out in portables and stuff. It was the ghetto. I'm talking right. about Donnie Hathaway, the Ooh. ghetto. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I went, I went to some, some rough schools or what have you. And I remember Pillins particularly was where a lot of the trauma that I had growing up mm -hmm. as a kid happened. Because I didn't fight back a lot. Bro. I just let people beat me. What was it about middle school? I don't... Maybe hormones or something. It had to be something, because it was turning niggas into Super Saiyans. <laughs> Everybody was aggressive, bro. Yeah. I, I don't know, because Farmville dealt with bullying. I can manage. It had a few fights, dealt with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was cool. But sixth grade, going to Booker T? Escalated. First time I... I told you, uh, when yeah. we was at the, the, the house woman with Kay, that... First time I got a knife pulled out on me. Middle mm -hmm. school. Exactly. I was just walking down the hall. And that's the reason why I let my ass get whooped at, right. at Pillings. I just, because I knew how far they were willing to take it mm -hmm. over something so little. You know what I mean? So I just let people just come up and punch me in my face or in my stomach or something like that. I just get beat. And I just walk away because I knew that it could escalate. Because mm -hmm. come on, if I fall back and you got whooped by the lame kid, the lame nerdy kid, you not going to live around school like that night right. with no hope you're going to do something to me right. to try to redeem yourself. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it. I'm going to take this L. And honestly, I didn't really have the heart to fight. I didn't like hurting others. Right. I was always a softie. When I finally did fight back, 
I never forget this. And he, I should have been like grown Ledrick looking back in hindsight. Mm -hmm. I should have put the pause on. I'm talking about the, <laughs> the circle of life. I'm talking like, about Lion King pause on that boy because he's spitting my food. He slapped me so hard the whole cafeteria got quiet and that was really embarrassing. Mm -hmm. He did a whole bunch and I just let all that happen. I was like, you know what? I went home real anyway. Mm. And I just mm -hmm. tried to sit there and he was just like, nope, you're going to take that too. And I was just like, Okay, <laughs> and I finally fall back because everyone threatened to jump me. They said, "Lindsay, we tired of you being a punk. If you don't, if you don't fight back, we gonna get you. you at least gotta go thirty seconds." I went thirty seconds with bro. I beat him up, and I I boohoo cried, and everyone uh was looking at me weird, and I kind of like feigned a sickle cell crisis. I blamed it on my sickle cell. I mean, on my disease. Uh, as to why I was crying, but the real reason why I was crying was I was really hurt that I hit him. You know, I won that fight, but in in my heart, I lost it. Mm. Because after that, I didn't see him the same. Every time I would see him, he looked like he was afraid of me. Mm -hmm. And that that kind of like, like that I don't, I'm that's not, not what you want. that's not me at all. Like, why can't we just talk? Why can't we just play? I was still a kid. Right. That was grown, having sex. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Being fast. I'm not even going to lie. I was fast, too, because I ended up losing my virginity in eighth grade. <laughs> I was fast, too, but, you know what I mean? That's not what I wanted to be. I, I just wanted to have fun. But my environment, limited choices. Yeah. And it just How dare you? The yeah. audacity of you wanting to enjoy life. It, the audacity of me wanting to enjoy life, watch Dragon Ball Z. You remember back in the days we used to just draw like the Dragon Ball Z character and then sell like the best? Yep. Like whoever the best. could trace the best or could draw the best could say you could make some money at school, right. boy. That's what I was caring about. Pokemon. You put it on your folder. You know, the folder had the little Yo. clear part you slide it in. Yo, now. yeah, yeah. I was mm -hmm. like, I got right. this right here. Super Saiyan 18. Go. Right. Cool. right. <laughs> Niggas ain't never seen this. They ain't gonna be ready for this. Not. <laughs> My first picture I drew of uh, Dragon Ball Z, I never forget, was from the Cell Saga. It was uh, when Vegeta turned Super Saiyan for the first time. Mm -hmm. It was, it was. I drew that photo when he, I think he told Android, uh, "You experience fear," and I put it in the little caption bubble above it. Man, oh yeah, but, uh, I never forget that. Did yeah. you sell that or you keep it? I sold it. How much you sold it for? Five dollars. Five dollars. That's at least twenty. That's at least a dollar. Right, right. That was that was, that was back then prices, that. man. But yeah, you, know, you could have traced that and then resold that. You could have. Man, I had I had snacks for the week off that. Uh, Boy, picture. that was the hustle. Dragon Ball Z, uh, and you know, low key because I, I I you know I congregated with a lot. We had to stay low key at Pillars the Nerds mm -hmm. and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Oh yeah. Back then I hated Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know why. I was, what? I was just was... a huge poke. I felt like Yu-Gi-Oh was like a threat to Pokemon for some reason. And so I was just like, Pokemon over Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh was next up. Because I, I I collected some Pokemon for a little bit, but then my mom got on that wave of, oh, this is the devil. Poke, uh, Pokemon, mm -hmm. I mean, Poke, Pocket Monsters, Pocket Monsters is devils. And I'm like... I heard that before, too. I'm like, mama. You are reaching. Yeah, right, like, I'm like, You're mama. You reaching. You finna get crossed up. Man. Mama. <laughs> you re oh, my mom like you burned reaching. my Pokemon cards. Ooh, I had a holographic I Charizard. Oh, you had a holographic. You know how much that's worth today? Yes, sir, it that is worth so much money today. I got it in a pack, bro. You remember you used to buy the little one? Oh, man, I'm hurt. I got hurt. a holographic I'm Charizard. Hurt. I'm hurt. I don't know where you at. We love you. Right. But why? Right. You know how much those is worth now? Yeah. Thousands though. of dollars, yes. bro. You can have yes. a whole brand new car, a house. I had a stack of about that thick, bro. And she yeah. burned them. She burned them. That's horrible. So from that, I got into Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering oh, yeah, was yeah, pretty yeah. cool. And then, but then Yu-Gi-Oh popped up out of nowhere. And then that just took, everyone was like super hype on. They, they wanted that, they wanted that, that dragon. I forgot what it was called. Uh, Blue Eyes, White Blue dragon. Eyes, White, White Dragon. Everyone wanted that dragon. And if you got there, you can get you some money from it. Mm -hmm. There was a, there were cards. The uh, anime. Dragon Ball Z, yeah, the anime. Mm -hmm. And um, burnt CDs. Ooh, That's all I just said. You just burn the CDs. Burn boy. CDs was the economy. What? I had, I had, I had it. You know what I mean? Because I used to ride my bike everywhere in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? You can you cost a little bit of change, add it up, and go where you want to go. And then you want to go to the gas station and get something to eat, right? Got to mm -hmm. have dough for that. My man ain't giving you bread. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. You know what I mean? Done with the days, man. What do kids do nowadays? I don't know, man. They don't know the struggle of having a CD player. And having to 
get new batteries to put in the CD player. Yes. Freezing those batteries so you can have it for like another day or so. Man, they don't know. Yeah. They don't know tapping on it make the CD skip. Yeah. They don't know. They don't know. know. They won't know. They won't know. And that's good. That, you know what? That's good because I'm for it because that means I ain't got to go through it no more because that was frustrating. <laughs> what? To deal with as a kid. I hate it because, you know, you if it happened, if it broke or if it didn't work right, well, at least I ain't getting it again. Right. So you, we had to take care of it. You know what I mean? Because stuff like that, I mean, I don't know because I was a kid. But according to mama, it was too expensive. Right. You know what I mean? So, and our kids just like break a tablet, a whole tablet and just right. be like, can I get another one? And just be like, just... It's different. But I knew inherently I ain't getting this in. All right, right. <laughs> yeah.